Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox, back with another video for After Effects. And today we're gonna to be emulating the Erica of Anderson on Twitter, kind of her style, which is a really cool style. We're not gonna be copying it one-to-one, -one, but we will be kind of doing something similar to what she does. Um, if you wanna check her out, I highly recommend it. Link down in the description for her Twitter account as well as her Patreon account. Anyways, so let's go ahead and get started here in After Effects and see kind of what we can create. A lot of what you start with versus what you end up with is just very small minor changes. So just keep that in mind. If you don't copy it one-to-one, -one, yours will come out a little bit different, but that's cool. It should come out different. Um, when they're different, they look really interesting and exciting. For example, these two are, uh, this one was a happy accident and this was the original. So um, anyways, let's just go ahead and get started by going composition, new composition. And I'm gonna make mine a thousand by a thousand. I think that's fine. 10 seconds is a good length. 25 frames per second is good. So I'm gonna start out by searching for an effect. Actually, I can't add an effect to nothing, so I should probably first create a layer new solid. Um, that red color is fine. The name Red Solid 7 is good. Um, I'm just gonna scale this up. Actually, layer new solid. Let me make sure I hit make comp size, make to comp size. That way it's the full composition. And I'm just gonna search for an effect called CC light sweep. Drag that on and you can see that that kind of gives me a light beam, but um, you can make a pretty easy gradient with this. So I'm gonna set this to zero. Sharp is fine, width maybe 265, intensity maybe 90, uh, edge intensity zero, thickness maybe, 3.4 or 4 is probably fine and I'm going to set this to cut out. So you can see here that it didn't really matter which color my background was but um, what will matter is how I change this and how I make it move. So I'm going to set a keyframe for center and I'm just going to drag it over. Drag it over. And I'm going to go to maybe 3 seconds and I'm going to then drag it to the other side until kind of the gradient falls off. Hit U on the keyboard select all of these and using the Motion uh, Mount MoGraphs plugin, Motion V2. I'm gonna add a little bit of smoothing to these keyframes. If you don't have that plugin, you can go to the graph editor, make sure this is set to speed graph, and you can actually just kind of pull these until you get something that looks similar to this. This is just an easy ease. But I also wanna create some expressions. So holding Alt, I'm gonna hit the stopwatch, and I'm gonna type under here, loop, out with a capital O, and so now this will loop. So I can see here that I need to maybe move this over just a bit more. So you can see I get some like banding and stuff here, and it doesn't really look that great. Like you get some weird colors banding and stuff like that. That's really bad um, normally, but for this, we're gonna add so many effects to this that you won't see it later, so it's not a big problem. So now I'm gonna control shift C and pre-comp this. Make sure you have move all attributes to the new composition selected. And I'm gonna name this gradient. And I am going to now create a layer new solid. So I wanna cut this up into even pieces, but I want them, I'm only actually gonna do halfway. So I need to do, it needs to be a multiple of 500 because it's half of the pixel. So I'm just gonna set this to 50 and hit okay. And I'm going to now move the anchor point to the top. So if you don't have this tool, you could just press this kind of pan behind tool or press Y on the keyboard and just drag the anchor point to the top. But I have the tool, so I'll use it. And I'm gonna duplicate this 10 times. So this is kind of exactly what, what, um, what Erica does as kind of the base for a lot of her of uh, animated GIFs, not all of them, but a lot of them. And I got this technique from her Vimeo because she uploaded a few kind of uh, real quick kind of tutorials on how she does some of her effects. And I thought that this was such a good base to start with because you could do so much with it um, once you have it. So that's kind of why I'm using it. So now with the gradient, I'm just gonna hit Control D, uh, duplicate it 10 times also. And I am going to kind of uh, move these underneath. So you notice that these are actually not in order. Um, that will create some problems, but um, 
this one they were all in order this one they were out of order so i'm i'm in i personally think that they look better when they're in order but um so i'm going to just make these in order it doesn't really take that much time and i just think it looks a little bit better both look really good but um, i think it just looks a little bit better so i'm going to drag these all underneath the red solids and using the search bar i could actually just search for gradient and it will highlight all of them, which is nice. So that way I could easily select them all and change this to alpha mat. So I could just get rid of now this search bar. And you'll see here that, you know, nothing looks like it really has changed. But it will once I start moving these, moving these layers. So I'm gonna grab the gradient, the first one, leave that. The second one, I'm gonna move it over to keyframes and I'm just gonna space these out evenly. This happens to be two keyframes, which is exactly what um, she uses or she used in her video but I think that that works the best one keyframe made it happen a little bit too fast um, three keyframes made it last a little bit too long and I didn't really like it too much so now I can just highlight all of these layers and hit control shift C again make sure move all attributes to new composition and pre comp 3 works so I'm just gonna hit OK um, I'm gonna actually drag this down and hmm well, let me actually, let me see. Let me rotate this by 180 uh, and search for a uh, effect called mirror. The reason why I had to rotate this by 90 degrees is because I didn't do this right. <laughs> so I'm gonna make that 90. What I mean by that is I actually wanted this piece to go first. So all of these should have gone the other way. Again, it would have probably looked fine if I left it like that. In fact, I'll do both just so you could see later. Um, I'll go back and toggle. But, um, well, I guess I won't really have a choice because, okay, let me, um, let me just live with this and not rotate this. And we're just going to see kind of what that looks like. I wanted it to kind of, again, be pointed, but that's fine. But this is, we'll just keep moving. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of this line here. Give me some proportional grid lines and I'm gonna move this gradient up until it hits that point, just so our center line is the same thickness. And I'm going to scale this up by maybe 105 and then center that up there. Is 105 enough? Wow, it's like perfect, I'm a freaking genius. Uh, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, I just, happen to be a genius so now I'm going to duplicate this layer and recall that our our main gradient layer the keyframes were three seconds apart so I can't actually make this three seconds apart because if I zoom in here you'll see that due to 25 frames per second I can't actually get in between the two seconds there's like I have to choose which side of the hill I want to be on. So I'm just going to choose this side of the hill. Um, it's going to make the loop a little bit funky, but um, hopefully not too funky. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to like five seconds, somewhere after the beginning, and I'm going to move my work area over. And I'm going to start by going to three seconds hit hit and on the keyboard and see if this loops well. I'm sorry. Move over three seconds and hit end on the keyboard, not two seconds. So I think that that looks fine. Um, it's not perfect, but it's but it's pretty good. So I'm gonna just right click this and uh, trim to comp trim comp to work area. So I just only have this work area, and I'm gonna pre comp these down to pre comp four. Okay, now we can start adding some cool stuff to this and make it look even cooler. So I'm gonna first add a glow to this. Whoops, I'm searching my project, which I don't wanna search. I wanna search my effects and presets and add a glow to this. And I'm gonna set this to maybe 12, the intensity of one. I think that that's fine. Um, and I'm also gonna add a twirl. And I'm gonna set this to 360. And the radius, maybe, maybe 100. 
So I think that that looks pretty cool. So right off the bat, I mean, that looks pretty cool as is, but there's definitely a lot more that we can do to this. So I'm gonna create layer new null uh, adjustment layer and add on here a lens. It's actually one of my favorite effects because it really just messes and messes up and does crazy stuff to your animations. It's just like 35. And I'm gonna add some noise. Set this, I'm gonna crank this up pretty high to like 25. And I'm gonna add a tint. And the black is fine because actually that's a matte. So the black I don't really need to change, but um, I already have a color save that I wanna choose. And it is that one. So there it is. So that looks pretty freaking cool. And that's pretty much it. And you can actually see that this is the, the inverse of that because of the direction of my arrows. Um, let me show you what happens if I mess with these a bit. So let's say, So let's just say that's what I ended up with. So it actually didn't make that big of a difference. Let me maybe grab these. So that's like really kind of exotic. It kind of looks like it's almost got like an Indian or Hispanic theme to it. Wow, that's actually really cool. So I'm gonna leave that like that. Um, what I'm going to end up with doing is creating a layer new solid and create a black background. And then I'm just going to change the tint here. So, oh, whoops. Um, it still made it like that little shrinky dink one. Um, so I'm going to then map black to maybe, I don't know, some like crazy color. Like that. Uh, maybe I'll map the pink to... I don't know, this is like really hideous, but um, the point is, is that you can kind of do any color scheme that you want and it loops perfectly. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something new. Definitely go check out Erica of Anderson's uh, uh, Twitter account as well as her Patreon, where you'll see stuff like this all day long and it's all super good, even better than what we just made. Um, it's really simple to produce, I think but the outcomes are just so amazing and so artistic and she does a really great job. So anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give this video a like. If you wanna download this project file, you can over on our Patreon account. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.